Welcome back to the Kitsy Kitchen. I'm Joe, and if you like the episode, you can subscribe to the show. And if you don't, <laughs> if you don't like the episode, I suppose you can leave a comment down there in the comments section telling me I'm not making the thing I said I was making, even though I said I'm doing a variation of it. Trying to get a rise out of me, Mr. Aaron Kong. Midwest Carbonara is bacon, egg, and cheese pasta. You, Mr. Aaron Kong? I think you told me I wasn't making the thing I said I was making because you want to be my friend. Well, I did some research, saw the videos you like, and between the Christian hymnals and the ballet dancing, I think you and I could get along like tacos and Tuesdays. But that's not what we're talking about today, folks. This is serious. This is my bottle of Sriracha. There have been many like it, but this one is mine. And if you're anything like me, about a month ago, you were seeing the bottom of the bottle there and starting to sweat like a spirit passenger in a window seat. Because this, ladies and gentlemen, has been turbulent. Huifang Sriracha is the top hot sauce in 31 states, and for good reason. It's not the hottest hot sauce in the world. In fact, on the Scoville scale, it only goes up between about 1,000 and 2,500. And those Scovilles go up past 2 milli if you feel like blowing your gosh darn head off. But it's got so many other things going on in there that round it out and make it the perfect hot sauce and consistency. Chilies for sure, but it's also got some garlic, salt, sugar, vinegar. And then for the consistency, a little sorbet, sulfite, xanthan gum, huh? It was started back in 1988 by David Tran. Wait, David Tran? That guy used to post a bunch of political stuff on my timeline back in 2016. Truth be told, I had it coming. I had some opinions and I was letting them rip on the old Facebook. Gosh, if it's 2023 and you're still getting in political arguments on Facebook, you are just a real cool guy. <laughs> Hi, David. No, the Sriracha David Tran is half a Chinaman, half a Vietnamese refugee immigrant to the US, and just the embodiment of the American dream, if you ask me. Guy had a great sauce, great idea, and we all got to taste our favorite foods with a nice new little kick to him. And he got rich. Good on everyone, right? Nope. So what the heck happened with Sriracha? Well, it starts to get a little more dicey than spicy. See, in the 90s, Huifang Foods was buying 500 tons a year of jalapenos from Underwood Farms to make their delicious sauce. Underwood Farms is headed by Craig Underwood, not to be confused with Frank Underwood. There's no better way to overpower a trickle of doubt than with a flood of naked truth. Better start building that ark because a storm of truths a brewing, folks. The hot sauce was slamming, demand was huge, and Underwood couldn't keep up with the necessary pepper production. There wasn't enough time space to grow the pecs of peppers, let alone pick them. By 2006, Huifang Foods was getting 95% of their peppers from Underwood, but that was only about 25% of old Craig's farmland. So in 2007, David Tran was pressuring Craig Underwood to expand his pepper farming to 50% of his total farmland. Now without giving up any of his other crops, tomatoes and whatnot, that would mean Craig would need to expand his farming from Ventura County over to Kern County. So Underwood tells Tran, listen, Tranny, bud, maybe you should get some peppers from some other farmers too, huh? You can't say that. Say what, bud? No. Oh. Nah, that's fine. He meant it as a term of endearment. You know, like how some fellas use the N-word. Plus, I didn't say it. Underwood did. Tran keeps pressure in Underwood. He says, Craigie, baby, I like your peps. I like the color, the crunch, the consistent level of spice. You're bringing the heat and I got the sauce. I just need more. Underwood says, Tranny baby, I love you, but I don't know. You're really asking me to stretch here, and if you don't come through, I'm worried I'm gonna be left in the downward dog waiting to exhale, but I'll see what I can do. Tran can't get enough pecs of peps, and Underwood can't crank them out fast enough. Then between 2014 and 2015, Tran sets up a new company specifically for the purpose of buying peps for Hui Fang Foods called Chili Coal. Now, I don't know exactly why you need a separate company to do that. Something, something, taxes, ask your accountant. But then to head up Chili Co, he hires his sister-in-law, Donna Lamb. His wife and his son didn't care too much for that appointment, but they really had their eyebrows raised when they found out how much of a pay increase old Donna was getting just to purchase pecs of peps. You don't get the in-laws involved. They're gonna Tom Wams gams you, and it does not end well. Okay, Tom. Hey, hey, Tom, Tom. We're good. We're good. It doesn't feel good, Greg! By 2016, Underwood has acquired 1,800 acres in Kern County. And you know you get an apartment and you lease it for a year? Well, Craig took out leases on this farmland into the 2020s and the 2030s. And now Hui Fang Foods is accounting for 80% of his business. Around the same time, Underwood COO Jim Roberts develops a mechanical way of harvesting the peps. This is a big deal. Gonna save a few bucks, make the harvest smoother, and hopefully seed one part of the economy to automation that does not involve ChatGPT. 
I'd like to take this moment to say that I harbor no ill will toward AI or our future robot overlords, and I look forward to working with you in a cooperative and friendly relationship. October 2016, Tran asks Underwood if he can fly a drone over to a whole mechanical operation and have a look, see how it works. Craig says, yeah, but Tranny baby, you got a pinky promise that you don't show anybody how I do it, okay? And then he spits in his hand and extends his pinky. Why does he spit in his hand? It's a farmer thing. Yeah, but they shake hands, they don't shake pinkies. Nah, it's a pepper farmer thing. Early November 2016, Tran, Underwood, and Donna meet to prepare for the 2017 harvest. Tran says, Craigie baby, you got me? And Underwood says, yeah bud, I'm planting 1,700 acres and I got them for 1,300 an acre. Here's the thing though, you think you could spot me a few bucks to get the whole thing going? Tran says, oh yeah, how much? And Craig says, about 18 schmilly. Tran says, yeah, and then they spit in their hands and they shake hands for real. You happy now? November 9, 2016, old Craig's on vacation and Tran and Donna ask Roberts to come to the factory to pick up some equipment. Once he's there, Tran says, listen here, bud, you're gonna work for us, okay? Giving him the old Viet Cong strong arm. But Robert says he can't do it, says Underwood makes the decisions. And then Tran says, look, Jimmy, baby, it's me. I'm the Tran man, the Tran dog. I'm Tranny baby. And Underwood is gonna have to start selling me them peps for 500 bucks a ton, see? Cause I'm talking to these Chinamen over here and they wanna sell them to me for 300 bucks a ton. But I like Craig, don't you know? So I still wanna go with his peps. Jimmy boy hightails it out of there and old Craig gets wind of this 500 bucks a ton business and oh boy is he in a pickle. Cause Craigie baby's paying 610 bucks a ton just to produce the gosh darn peps. Now it's a month later and Tran and Donna tell Craig that he's gotta get his peppers from Chilico instead of Hui Fang, which means Donna. And old Craig doesn't want to because Chilico doesn't have the assets to make sure he's gonna get paid. And by the way, who is this Donna? She's been in the picture for three years and now I gotta deal with her instead of you, Tranny baby? I think she might be Wom's gammons, you bud. He didn't really say that. Succession wasn't even on back then. In any case, Tran and Donna tell Craigie boy that it's not Hui Fong anymore, it's Chili Core bust. And then he says, and if you don't wanna deal with Donna, maybe you don't need that 18 schmilly anymore, do ya? Hey bud? January 2017, Craig tells Tran that it's not cool that he modified the agreement and there's no way he's gonna be able to meet the terms. 500 bucks a ton, can't do that. Not even with robots handling the harvest. He says, Tranny baby, the planting season's over, there's no plants in the ground and I can't deliver any of my special spicy peps. So Tran contracts with other farmers. He even shows them the drone footage that he pinky promised he wasn't gonna show so they can meet the mechanical pepper production protocols and get him all his pepper pecs. But the other farmers stink, and production freezes like Mitch McConnell in a press conference. Well, the Democrats are entitled to the peppers and entitlements. That's not funny. Somebody should help that man. Maybe get him a pepper garden, huh? So now Tran's got the man he can't meet, and Underwood's not getting any money off the land he leased. He loses 8.5 million in 2017 and starts trying to farm other crops on the land that Tran told him to acquire. He's not very successful though, partially because California at that time was drier than a box of crackers. Then in 2018, he loses another 6 million. And that's when the lawyers come in. They go to court, the court says Tran is in breach of contract and he has to pay a total of 23 million to Underwood. 13 for the money Craigie boy lost and another 10 million because his feelings were hurt while Tran was talking to old Donna. Craigie baby had to pay David Tran back 1.5 million that Hui Fang Food said they overpaid for peppers. But what's 1.5 when we're talking about 23 million? And a bunch of lawyers took cuts on both sides of the whole thing. Then 2020 rolls around and some farmers are producing peppers, maybe here, maybe in China, but then something wild happened in 2020 over there in China. I can't remember what it was. What the heck happened in 2020? Yeah, I don't remember. Anyway, by 2022, Sriracha is getting hard to come by. And some of these knockoff Sriracha brands start showing up on the scene, including one that Craigie Boy tried to make for himself. Now I will throw myself off the Robert Street Bridge in December before I buy some low rent version of the best gosh darn hot sauce ever known to man. So I start going on the offensive. I'm talking to anybody who will listen about this issue. For a sec there, I couldn't even find it over at the Hot Tien. 
make Sriracha available again. By 2023, the B-Squad knockoff Sriracha is still around, but slowly production of the good stuff is coming back. Here's the thing though, it's coming in at quite a price hike. About $12.99 a bottle over there at the Hot Tien. And if there's any market that would have an in on the good stuff, I'm inclined to think the Hot Tien would. You know what kind of a name Hot Tien is? It's not Polish. Well, I'll pay, I'll pay the $12.90 frickin' nine, but I'm hoping we can get that price to come down. Hoping Tran and Underwood could find a way to be friends too. Kinda like Aaron Kong and me found some things that we liked about each other and just focused on that. And Donna? Oh, don't get me started on Donna. Thanks for watching Kitchy Kitchen.